Hi, I'm Kiri. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're a new uh, viewer of my stuff, please uh, feel free to subscribe and like and, and do all the usual stuff. Uh, it's glad uh, to see you um, taking a chance in viewing my channel. Um, well, today um, I'm going to review three books. They're going to be brief reviews because of a uh, otherwise I'll probably go on forever and uh, I want to make this video under a certain time length. Um, I've been away for a little while um, since the last video because I've basically been doing all the sorting out about a new job and last Monday the 21st I actually started a new job working from home for a large insurance firm. It's been a little bit bewildering and confusing uh, just getting into their systems and learning how everything works. I'm still not really up to speed with everything um, and so that's what my time has been taken up with lately. Um, and uh, today is the 27th of March 2022. Um, we're still in the midst of an Omicron COVID wave here in New Zealand. It looks like it is slackening off. The daily figures are going down a little bit, but still a bit dangerous out there. And hence, I've been staying around home as much as I possibly can. Um, so without further ado, let's get to the books. Now, the first one I want to mention uh, this time is The This by Adam Roberts. Now, this is a novel, and it's uh, supposedly inspired by the works of the philosopher Hegel. Um, not being up with all the philosophers, uh, I have read about them, you know, in the distant past, but I haven't really kept anything uh, working knowledge of them. So that, that kind of, all the references to Hegel kind of went over my head in this. Um, so I'm just left with the story which I can review. So... Basically, there are two, there's a little bit of an experimental type chapter at the start, set in the bardo, kind of afterlife, purgatory, limbo, whatever you want, where a, an individual is um, experiencing the visions of the lives of just about every other human being, and lives and deaths and how they died, and um, after that it drops back into a, a regular no, uh, story. Um, two main story threads, the first one is... Um, about a guy, Rich, who's uh, become known like that because he inherited a, a property from his parents and his friends uh, thought he was rich, but he's become isolated and lonely and he is um, working as a freelance writer because uh, he's got English English qualifications um, and he gets his job so he, uh, he writes via uh, an app, uh, some type of task um, setting app and... Um, all around him in this, uh, it's set in the near future London, I think it's 2026. Um, there's this new social media outfit called The This, and as part of signing up with them, you get an implant into the roof of your mouth, which slowly uh, gathers material from your body to, cre to create a connection to your brain, and um, it seems a little sinister, um, And but it's... Uh, Defenders say it's oh it's just like using Twitter but you don't have to use your hands you can just think things and um, but um, some people see it differently see it's a bit of a strange cult and it's developing anyhow Rich is tasked with writing a uh, interview with one of the uh, executives at the this in London so he goes there and um, they're all very creepy and he um, comes back home writes up his story and then. Uh, finds he's obsessed about this executive, this woman that he met, and um, soon he's been contacted on the streets by agents of the this, trying to get him to join, and all his old friends start contacting him, tell him to, asking him to join. So he basically freaks out and um, basically disconnects himself from the, the uh, internet for a while, and uh, during this he meets uh, uh, an elderly lady who's... Um, turns out to be part of an effort against the this by the uh, authorities and um, Rich becomes, gets recruited by them to act as like a Trojan horse to join the this with a, a payload in his brain that will act against them. Um, Rich's story is, was the most relatable to me. He was seemed to be um, similar to me in my interests and what have you. And um, um, I was quite disappointed that the story once he becomes an agent against the, the story kind of uh, collapses around him. And the other thread is um, Adna Adam, um, Adnan, oh, let me just check. Uh, <laughs> bit of a, Adam, sorry. Um, now his, his story is set uh, several decades later than Rich's. It's in the future, 
you further into the future even and the, the this uh, uh, cult or whatever you want to call it has become basically a hive mind and it's at odds with the rest of mankind and they actually have open warfare between them and Adan is um, in his future I think it's in the 2080s um, there are there's these robot mobile robot things called fiends which are kind of like a combination of a, a robot and a um, like what the, we'd use like a cell phone for these days, a smartphone. They, uh, these fiends actually can act as like uh, sexual partners for the owners and all sorts of other things. Now, um, Aiden's fiend seems to be playing up. Um, he's getting all, it's getting glitchy, takes time to get fixed, they can't find any problem. Um, and he's messing around with it and it, he gets a message from an unknown individual through this fiend's screen and it tells him a... Uh, a uh, magic phrase that he may need in the future and um, all sorts of weird stuff and he doesn't know what's going on with it and um, he is surviving on money from his mother and his mother um, cuts him off and um, joins the hive mind and so basically he um, runs out of money so the only option he has is to join the army so he goes through training and then he gets deployed against the hive mind in several military actions and during one of these actions, he discovers that the phrase that he was told via his fiend has the ability to shut down the uh, robot hordes of the hive mind. And this, uh, after this occurs a couple of times, it comes to the attention of the uh, higher authorities of the military, and they want to deploy him as a, a uh, secret weapon against the hive mind. Um, and all the while, he's still worried about his fiend, his uh, fiend he was separated from when he uh, went into the army, and... Um, his thoughts often fall back onto his fiend, which he's infatuated with, and um, I guess he has to make a choice whether he uh, saves mankind or uh, thinks about his fiend, and uh, we find out which choice he makes. Now, um, I enjoyed the book. Um, the ending's a little strange. Uh, I think it's the framework of the philosophy of Heigl, um, which... Um, the author has draped everything over, which I wasn't familiar with, so I was a little frustrated about how things worked out. The the obvious endings weren't um, weren't uh, the ones that happened, and uh, it was just twisted to uh, suit the philosophy. And there's also the weird uh, George Orwell 1984-esque um, pastiche chapter, which involves uh, totally different characters and... Um, I, um, I'm assuming it's supposed to be set further into the future after the uh, hive mind has succeeded against most humans and um, we see what, what what's next in store for them. Um, so anyway, it's an enjoyable book. Like I said, I would have enjoyed more of it if there's more of a setup with Rich in the um, near contemporary times. I think his story is curtailed a bit um, and Aidan's story kind of uh, takes over and um, it's not quite as satisfying as it could be, but after all, it is still a good read, so that's The This by Adam Roberts. Now, on a totally different uh, tack, uh, after the, the This, I read this book, Jot, by Mary Rose Barrington. Now, I had read a review of this book in the 14 Times magazine years ago, and it's been on blog by... Uh, wish list on one of the book retailing websites for for years and i finally pulled the trigger and bought it recently now jot stands for just one of those things like what we tell ourselves when something inexplicable but really minor happens in everyday life and we just say well it's just one of those things we don't think nothing of it now um, mary rose barrington is uh uh well she actually has died since producing this book but she was uh high up in the uh, society for uh Psychical Research, SPR, the big old uh, long-running uh, um, organisation which studied ghosts and the afterlife and, uh, and post-death survival and what have you. And she also was a lawyer and a researcher in other fields. Um, and what she's been doing is collecting uh, cases of these jot type things and she's created categories for them to fall into, to be classified and um, a lot of stuff like that. So half the book is really basically a case book of people's experiences that they've sent to the SPR or, or Mary Rose Barrington, and she kind of categorises them into her uh, into her uh, categories that she set up. And um, some of them are very fascinating. There's really odd things like people finding uh, 
documents and a, and a pile of other documents and then them not seeming to be to disappear again and then uh, under investigation they found that these documents shouldn't be in there at all and uh, but the information in the documents being valid and true and checkable um, other things like kitchen utensils suddenly disappearing one day and then reappearing where people have no access to there's all the old standbys like keys someone's put down somewhere um, they go back to pick them up and they've disappeared and um, then days, months or even years later they suddenly reappear in the same location there's all a whole lot of things like that. kitchen utensils, keys, uh, bowls, items of clothing all that sort of thing it's all very mysterious of course most of these things could probably be explained by people's uh, lapses in memory and recall um, but there are some really strange cases involved in, um, and chronicled in this book um, the second half of the book I didn't enjoy as quite as much as uh, Barrington goes into uh, trying to explain where these jot incidents take place in the uh, wider universe of the paranormal and on the way she takes a quite a tortured route by um, going through how the science and the paranormal basically don't like to coexist and how studies of the paranormal always turn out uh, bad for everyone involved um, and then she uh, ends up by invoking some type of religious uh, paranormal type of framework uh, to explain the jots and I wasn't sure it was quite uh, convincing but anyway it's worth it for the case file so that's Jot by Mary Rose Barrington and lastly the book I finished just last night and I did that on the iPad to just give me a second to bring it up there we go is Masters of British Comic Art by David Roach. Uh, there we go, I hope you can see that. Now uh, this is a PDF file version of a book which is usually a hardcover, a very large hardcover, uh, A3 or bigger size, um, expensive book, it's costs over $100 to uh, buy it here at least in New Zealand. Um, but I've had it on my wish list for it for forever, for, well, since it came out two or three years ago and um, stumbled across a humble bundle sale a few weeks back and it was included as that in a ebook form so I grabbed that along with all the other contents which were in that bundle and it was quite a bargain. Um, so anyhow I've been reading Master of British Comic Art for the last week or two. Um, basically it's, uh, well like it says on the tin, it's, um, Roach writes basically about 13 or 14 chapters basically each one's like a separate essay on some aspect of British comics, um, the origin, the, the main drivers of it, the artists which set all the standard and styles which were copied and aped and became like industry standards for artwork. Um, each chapter has a slightly different angle like we see from like newspaper strips or adventure strips, girls comics, children's comics, there's a whole chapter about 2000 AD which has been very influential. Uh, after that there's chapters about all the British artists which uh, in the 1980s we were uh, attempted to go over to the United States to find fame and fortune and there's also essays about uh, underground comics and and um, independence and all that type of thing and all, each one is a separate essay you could read separately but they all build it into one like uh, comprehensive history of the uh, art form in the UK. Now that takes up a, a part of the book. The rest of the book is a gallery um, and it's contains examples, at least one example for a, from a whole lot of different artists. Some uh, artists have about two or three pages worth of material and they, and the reproduction is really great. It looks great so I can only imagine that in the hardcover version it's looking uh, really great. Um, and this there's pages and pages of comic art from the 19th century through to um, near, near to the present day. And so that's uh, Masters of British Comic Art. I enjoyed it. If you have any interest in comics or graphic design or history of uh, graphic, graphic arts um, or just uh, social history of the United Kingdom, it's a, a small aspect but an important one to a lot of culture there. Um, so that is Masters of British Comic Art. And even the essay sections are, are fully illustrated. So you're not reading... Uh, dull boring breakfast text everywhere there's are illustrations and they look really good they've been scanned at high quality um, and like I said this 
is usually a physical book with a, in a really huge coffee table type size. Um, it, but in this PDF, the, the art's looking really good, so the printed book must look pretty amazing as well. So that's Masters of British Comic Arts by David Rutch. So that's it. Um, three books there. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll uh, be back with you soon, hopefully, if everything works out. Um, and I hope you have a good day and a good week ahead.